loose parts feeder is a feeder with backlight. It allows the PSE 3000 to easily pick in place components scattered randomly on it. The backlight greatly facilitate the task of the vision system. The feeder is powered by the PSE 3000 through this magnetic connector. You can place it horizontally or vertically, but in the last case, the nozzle N2 cannot reach the first row. If you place the feeder horizontally, both nozzles can reach all the slots. Okay, now I place some resistors randomly on one slot. I see that I have three resistors upside down and three correctly laid down. For this video, I'll use just one nozzle and I'll keep the feeder vertically. To turn on the backlight, there is an actuator. Just this, loose parts feeder light. I move the camera on this slot just to show you the difference between having the light and not having it. I will use a reference feeder I've already created, but then we will create a new one together so I can explain to you all the steps. You see how the backlight helps to fade the resistors that are upside down and increase the contrast of the ones that are laid correctly. We just give a look at the pipeline. The last stage, draw results, is for us to have a feedback. It shows us the components that are properly recognized and it draws a frame around them with a perpendicular line to the longer side and a mark on the center. The vision system will use another stage, the one named results. Okay, we start from the beginning. We create a new feeder. As you can see, there are two loose parts feeders. We use the reference one. This is okay for symmetric parts, like resistors or capacitors. For this kind of components, there is no difference between left or right. But for components that are not symmetric, like transistors, you need to use the advanced loose part feeder. This can recognize the orientation of the parts thanks to a template that you create. You'll find a link to more information about the advanced loose part feeder in the description. We go on with the reference loose part feeder. First of all, we associate a part to the feeder. We choose our 805, that is a part used in our test calibration board. Second step, we need to capture the slot pick location. I'm just on it, so I click on this icon to capture the coordinates. Always click on apply after you've made changes. We need to find out what is the real height of the components. So I place the viewfinder on a resistor and then I click on this icon, move last selected tool to camera position. Now I can go down until the nozzle touches the resistor. Note, the orientation of the resistor is detected by the top camera before it is picked up. So it is very important that the resistor doesn't move during the picking up. Therefore, it is necessary that the component is lifted after it is pressed on the feeder. I tried to pick up the component with the nozzle far from it, 0.1 millimeters. But then the suction, lifting it up, has always slightly changed the rotation and position of the resistor in relation to the nozzle. So it is very important that the component is lifted after a good contact with the nozzle. I went down to touch the resistor and I added another 0.1 millimeters in the direction of the feeder, just to be sure to have a good contact. As you can see, I started with a value of minus 15.1, with the nozzle not touching the resistor. But to the end, after trials and errors, I understood that you need to stay on the resistor. So I changed the Z value of the feeder to minus 15.3, and the results were finally good. Okay, now let's edit our pipeline. You will see that the values we will input are quite different from values you'll see on other videos around. That is because higher resolution cameras have more pixels, so we need to input higher values. First, we need to discriminate the area where we want the vision system to operate. We do this by a rectangular mask that we will put after the stage, image capture. We set the values width and height of the mask to cover correctly our area. 
Now we go on the last stage to see if by chance the default values give any good result. We are out of luck. We need to set all the steps. With the stage gray color convert, we discard the color information. Then we have a threshold that we named highlights. We push down the value until we have the upside down resistors almost disappearing. If this stage is enough, you could uncheck the threshold for the low light. Otherwise, we recall the gray stage and we apply another threshold. We name it low light and we proceed as before. Then we add high light and low light. So we blur the resulting image and we name it merged. In my case, I had to blur with a kernel of 13. The stage find contours does just this. It finds connected contours in the image in terms of lines and curves. We change the retrieval mode to list. In filters contours, we don't see any results. In our case, the value max area is too small. We need to change it to 3000. And we see that now we have three strings. Next, the stage minimal area rectangular contours creates a rotated rectangle that fits around previously found filtered contours. Then, the stage orient rotated rectangles takes note of the rotation of the parts that will finally be used. We have two of these stages. One is just for us, to check the results. The negated one is the one used by the visual system to place the components. Draw contours and draw results are just for us, to have a feedback to evaluate if the vision system is doing a good job. Draw contours just draws contours that may not be straight lines. Draw results, draws the oriented rectangles previously found. Well, from the last stage, we can see that the vision system didn't have any problems to discriminate our resistors, ignoring the one upside down. Let's change the color and the thickness of the drawn rectangles. I change also the center radius. I close the window and I save the pipeline. I can test by these two icons if the camera recognizes the orientation of the first resistor. Okay, I put some double tape on the pads and let's try to place two resistors. I will try with R2 and R242. First of all, let's check the board location. I noticed that I moved it a little. So I perform a fiducial check of the board. Okay, let's go to check this one. Perfect placement. Okay, perfect placement. The result is quite good. There is also a way to let the PSE 3000 flip the components that are upside down. This is done by a special job and another pipeline. Sooner or later, I'll make a video about that. Keep tuned.